It's an event that stands unique on the motor racing world stage. A grand prize among the most prestigious in Kiwi sport. For nearly 70 years, it's lured the greats from all corners of the globe and been making some legends of our own. To win this one is truly special. No wonder it keeps bringing them back. Back for just one more shot at glory. To know you've beaten the very best, mastered the machine, the elements, and summoned up every ounce of stamina. There'll be celebrations beyond the limelight too, for those who toiled away and played an equally important part. For this stop of the summer tour, we're in the mighty Waikato region in the Upper North Island, as we welcome viewers from right round the world to Hampton Downs and our coverage of the 67th New Zealand Grand Prix, round four of the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship. The Castrol Toyota Formula Regional Oceana Championship has come to Hampton Downs for the New Zealand Grand Prix. But put that aside, because there's a championship at stake. Let's take a look at the standings going in to Hampton Downs. With three rounds gone, it's Austria's Charlie Wurtz on top with 212, just six points ahead of New Zealand's Callum Hedge. USA's Jacob Abel is third on 182, then it's James Penrose of New Zealand fourth, Liam Skeets in fifth, then Morales, Quinn, Mason eighth, Sheehan ninth, and Chloe Chambers of the USA rounding out the top ten. McClellan of Australia is 11th, the Corey of Brazil, then Brianna Morris of New Zealand, Louis Foster of Great Britain, Adam Fitzgerald of Ireland, and Billy Fraser with 18 points in 16th place from New Zealand. So what's today all about? Well, the star of the show is the New Zealand Motor Cup, right here in all its glory. And when you get up close, you kind of begin to understand a history. This trophy itself goes back to 1923. It's one of the oldest racing trophies in the world. You've got the beautiful Kiwi out on top, but really it's at the bottom that you get the significance of names like Jack Brabham, Sterling Moss, John Surtees. All the greats have been here, and that's because the Tasman series goes back to 1950, and all the greats of motor racing used to come to New Zealand to take part in the Tasman series. Now, Toyota took that on some 17 years ago and have been bringing out champions and Formula One stars like Lando Norris, Lance Stroll, you name it. They've all been on this trophy. The other part is the tradition continues. Just in the paddock this weekend, we've got ex-winners, David Oxton, Greg Murphy, Paul Radisic, all have been part of the history of this Motor Cup. And what's also significant is when you look at the grid for this weekend's race, there are several drivers who've only come just for one reason, to win this. Brendan Leach, Billy Fraser, Caleb Nartoa, all want to do that. And of course, Chris Vanderdrift, who came so close two years ago. It's an incredible trophy. It's an incredible tradition that New Zealand motor racing is so proud of. Who will win it? That's anybody's guess. But one thing I can tell you, whoever does walk away with this amazing trophy today will be remembered for a long time to come in history and I'm sure will go on, like so many others before them, to make it in the world of motor racing. Welcome to Hampton Downs Motorsport Park. Track distance 3.8 kilometers and the lap record set by Michael Lyons with a 1 minute 27.63 with a total of 10 turns. Let's take a look at the grid. Lauren Van Hoppen, in pole position, Caleb Nartour, but they're not in the championship. These two are Callum Hedge, Louis Foster can't win the championship, but he can take points away. Fitzgerald coming in late. Skeets looking very quick at the moment. Charlie Burt, seven. Work to do from there. Morales already a winner in eighth. Then it's Ryder Quinn and Brendan Leach, ninth and tenth. Further down. Chris Vanderdriff and Jacob Abel, an important race for Abel. He has to score major points here. Fellow American Ryan Sheehan in 13th position. Further down, it's Chambers and Fakori of Brazil, Chambers of the USA. And then comes Josh Mason, Billy Fraser down in 18th position. Big surprise for me, Bree Morris in 19th position. Just a reminder, Charlie Wirtz leads the championship with 212. Callum Hedge, six behind on 206. Then Abel, with work to do from 12, is third in the championship. Here we go then. Out go the lights, and away we go! And a great start 
from Caleb Nata. Boy, is he off to the races. What a great start by the Kiwi. Huge start by him there. As you can see, he's on the on the right side of the road there. Cleaner line, got a great start. It's Callum Hedge on the outside as well, tucking Hedge. in now behind. Yeah, Hedge uh, slightly bolted by the Dutchman Van Hoven, but uh, gets through. Now goes to the outside. Behind him is Louis Fosser on the inside. Now the outside is Liam Skeets. Good start from Hedge. He's into third. He's got ahead of Skeets just about, and behind. Van Hopen, but it is Caleb Nata, Skeets and Louis Foster side by side, round the long right-hander. Very, very difficult one to get caught on the outside there, but Caleb, he is gone. Are you worried in any way that they might have a look at that start? I don't think so, I don't think so. It looked like a great start by him, so uh, he's, he just, he's on the cleaner line as well, so that also messes with the driver, so Lauren in that situation knows that Caleb's on the, on the cleaner race line. Uh, which helps with their race start, but you can see the battle raging on here. Yeah, two Kiwis with nothing to lose. Van der Drift and Leach right there in the thick of it in the midfield, looking for position. Van der Drift ahead of Damon Leach at the moment. I said Damon, it should be Brendan. <laughs> Easy to do. Brothers, of course, who have raced here in the series over the years. Van der Drift looking very racy. Fitzgerald just ahead. And Skeets ahead of both Van der Drift and Abel now moving through. Jacob Abel started 12th. He needs the positions. As you can see there, Charlie Wirtz also getting boxed down the outside of the track there. Brendan Leach up the inside of him. This is perfect for Callum Hedge. He's way ahead of Wirtz. We'll keep an eye on where he is. Tenth at the moment. But this is what Callum needs. It's a clean race. Stay out of trouble. Get the points. And Wirtz just got caught wide there again. He's dropping positions everywhere. Yeah, this is the first time we've really seen him in the midfield and in the pressure. So we're going to see what kind of metal this man has. His father, of course, a Formula One star in the past and a Toyota world champion at all as well. Morales in 12th position, just ahead of Sheehan, then Chambers. Mason, 15th. Penrose, Fraser, Morris, Fakuri. Morris has made one spot up. Brendan Leach looking super racy here. He's made another position on Lean Skeets. Yeah, I talked to Brendan after the qualifying. It was a terrible qualifying for Brendan. He ended up in the gravel at one point. He said he wasn't happy with the setup at all. They changed things. He wasn't happy with the changes that were made. And now he's gone back to his own way of setting up. Typical Brendan. He likes to do it his way. And if he's got a comfortable car, watch out, world. That yellow and black bumblebee will be coming through. Everybody set, settling back to relax at Giles. Well, sort of. I've just chanced on a conversation in here at Giles Motorsport. Now, Stephen Giles isn't giving away too much at the moment, but it does seem like there is some sort of little gremlin for Louis Foster right now. And I said, it, is it in the shift? And he was reluctant to tell me. So let's keep an eye on Louis Foster. Ah, a shift in the progress then of Foster because he doesn't look as strong. And now look at Fitzgerald all over him, side by side through one. And Van der Drift now, and they make a sandwich out of the Englishman. And through goes both the Irishman and does the Kiwi down to turn two. Yeah, clearly some sort of issue going on there, the way he struggled to get the car on the exit of there, but he's still battling on hard. He's not giving in, is he? Oh, and he's lost real big time now. And I think that has put paid to any hope he's got. And here comes Abel, the number 51, trying to get past Louis Foster. There is some sort of problem, we think. And I think quite rightly, Stephen Giles keeping stum about it. But Louis Foster, who made such a sensational arrival last weekend in the doldrums this weekend. And Skeets right in the thick of it. Quinn and Morales now ahead of him. Ryan Sheehan just behind in the 66. Look at the battle pack in behind there. So, Verts on the inside in the seven. Ryan Sheehan just behind him in the 66. Look at this, Morales and Quinn side by side. Quinn in the pink and white. Morales in the red, white and blue of the United States. Foster holding on for dear life here. He's having real problems. This isn't the Louis Foster we saw last weekend, is it? No, he's certainly struggling with some sort of issue there, which is holding him back big time there as he's stuck on the outside. He's basically just letting other cars through now as it's just creating a danger for others. Yeah, and you know, he's a wise head is Louis. I heard him in the press conference. He got penalized last weekend. He understood why, but uh, he was quite phlegmatic about it. And here he comes, number 26. Sad to see the orange and black. And as you can see, no real rush to do anything. They know it's game over for this particular race, but he'll be back for the Grand Prix. You can guarantee that. Let's head down to Rusty. He's got an update. Put us in the picture, when did it start happening and exactly what happened? We don't know yet. Um, I, I can't tell you for sure. We'll have to look at the car and figure it out. Some kind of clutch issue. It happened from the start, really. Um, 
when I was on the line, the car was crawling by itself when I was fully clutched down, so I instantly knew there was a bit of an issue there. Um, and then, yeah, basically, whenever I was on power, it was almost like I was dabbing the clutch, so it was just revving. So people would come out the corners and just drive straight past me. And then it got progressively worse. First few laps, I could handle it to a point where I'd be losing a lot of time, but I could keep people behind. But then that in lap, you know, if I went over 20% power, it just revs off the limiter. So um, it's unfortunate, but you know, something's break. Frustrating Saturday for you. Go get him in the Grand Prix. I'll okay. we'll try to. Cheers, mate. Good battle this. Penrose, winner, last time out in the feature race. Comes alongside Billy Fraser. And the older statesman of the group out there, besides Van der Drift, starting to make his way. And this is a board. Oh, 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 that was a brave move. And he's still in it. Keep your foot in, James. Not, not over yet as they go for the run down the main straight. Billy's got the inside line. But James has a bit more speed down the straight. Is he going to be able to go around the outside? Big late break for him. He's able to break that a little bit later as he's on the cleaner line. Great racing. Look at this, guys. Fantastic stuff. Oh, as he just gets pushed a little bit wide there. And he's lost out to Mason too, Josh Mason makes his move on Penrose and Penrose had it all then and then lost it all as they go through Swampy again. We see it high above that long right hander before double B. Last lap. So Hedge doing a great job. We haven't seen much of him, but he's in third and on the podium. Me, whoa, Caleb, careful son. Oh, he almost lost it completely into the dipper there. So, did you see what happened there? So basically, Van Hopen, he was to the inside of the track, so he was just trying something by showing his nose, knew he wasn't going to make a move, and that was still enough for Caleb to still twitch. have a bit of a lock up and twitch there. So, tense moments for the number 15, but now, surely, he's on the run to win here for the first race at Hampton Downs. Caleb Nutter is back in New Zealand and back to winning ways. What a great result for the young Kiwi and for Giles Motorsport. Great result for Callum Hedge too. He takes third place. Fantastic drive. Let's see some results. Here are the results then. Great stuff from Caleb Nato for Giles Motorsport. M2 competitions. Lauren Van Hopen in second and Callum Hedge third. Adam Fitzgerald, the Irishman for Giles in fourth. Vanderdrift in fifth. Brendan Leach, sixth place on his return to TRS. Jacob Abel, seventh, ahead of Charlie Burt's eighth. Ryder Quinn ninth, that's an important eighth for Charlie Wirtz, we'll talk about it in a moment. Ryder Quinn in ninth, David Morales in tenth position. Further down, Liam Skeets, Ryan Sheehan, Joss Mason, Billy Fraser, not the result he would have wanted. James Penrose in all sorts of problems, but managing to get 15th ahead of Chloe Chambers. Brianna Monis taking 17th place ahead of Lucas Bacori in 18th, and Louis Foster pulling in with that gear shift problem. It sets it up all nicely for this whole weekend, doesn't it? P3, and congratulations, you're new championship leader. I, was, I thought I might be the championship leader after that, um, but no, really happy. Um, off the start, I got a really good launch, but then the car didn't upshift the gear, so that's why I dropped back, and then I had to fight for, fight for third to make sure I held that. So we'll look into it tonight, uh, see what the issue was there. Wow, that was a hell of a battle. He got you on the line. Yeah, just the, the start was really bad. Um, and after that, I think I did a good race. I was able to stay really close to him and actually catch him a bit in the end. Um, but it's just really hard to, to overtake then when you, once you get close. The man from Marta, the Cable Nartour. Congratulations, mate. That was, I gotta say, that was a hell of a start. Did you have your nose slightly pointed? No, nah, mate, if anything, I had it further back, you know, I was too scared. <laughs> um, but no, you know, I, I practiced my starts, it was my flaw throughout the last year. So, you know, I, I focused on that, just put my head down and the boy from Martin, you know, hustle, hustle and got there. Hi, my name is Lucas Vecuri, I'm a driver from São Luís, Brazil. I was doing karting since my four years old and, um, yeah, since, since like last year I was like, doing cars so big step but yeah very happy my dad wished to be a racing driver but he died the dad doesn't let him so yeah i'm the first one i think it's like a great option like a winter series type and uh, so i can like gain gain more experience to compete like in high level on the on my main series that's usf juniors of course so my main goal is obvious to reach IndyCar, but um, it's pretty difficult. Um, I wish to be like just going up and up the, the categories and to be close at least 
we just need like a year like a little far away from the road to Indy just to get like some experience and now um, I think we are ready to go to the road to Indy and do like some podiums wins. Coming up we meet a young Kiwi making the successful transition from Formula 4 to Formula Regional. I'm Liam Skeets, I'm 17 years old and I'm from Auckland. Um, it's taken a lot of work to get to get here um, in terms of just sponsorship and, and training and preparation on the car. Um, yeah, so to finally be here, walking around in the pits, seeing the car for the first time, yeah, it was incredible. It's an honour and a privilege to be able to represent the Kiwi Drive Fund. They've got a very rich history of um, great drivers that have also been supported. Well, my dad raced um, Tin tops himself, saloon cars. When he was, uh, when I was just a kid, a young kid. Um, so yeah, I guess it would make sense if I followed the same route as he went down. But um, when I jumped from karting to to race cars, I went to a Formula Ford, which is a single seater. And yeah, I've loved loved doing Formula Ford. So um, when I'd done my t my stint in Formula Ford, I thought the best destination for me after Formula Ford would be TRS. I'd love to go over to the USA and start in the Road to Indy program. It's something I've had my eye on for about a year now and um, talking to a lot of people that, are, that have been over there and done it, um, yeah, it's very appealing. I went to the Elite Motorsport Academy, I was I just turned 15, so it was um, a couple years ago now. Um, and it, it taught me how the importance of all aspects of motorsport. Um, prior, prior to going to the academy, I really thought driving was the most important aspect, but going there and learning about you know the media, sponsorship, um, training, you know your nutrition, your training, it's so vital now that I realise how all those play a part into your performance on race day. Honestly, I've never had like a, a ritual or something I've done every time I hopped in the car. Um, I know a lot of drivers like to stretch or do reaction stuff, stuff like that. But I kind of just. Um, in the garage, talking to my engineer or my mechanics, just kind of laid back, chilled out, um, try not to stress about it or think about what's ahead too much and just relax until I put the helmet on and get in the seat. That's where it starts to ramp, ramp up, but yeah, pre-race, so I'm pretty laid back normally. Let's take a look at the grid. Charlie Burtz in pole, Jacob Abel alongside him, the American. Then comes Brendan Leach and Chris van der Drift. Both they are looking for a Grand Prix win. Adam Fitzgerald, Callum Hedge. Hedge from six will try to move forward, as he says. Lauren van Hopen, what a weekend he is having. Caleb Nartoa, likewise. Watch them come through. Ryder Quinn and David Morales, both have been very racy, both great characters. Liam Skeets and Ryan Sheehan, the Kiwi and the American, 11th and 12th. Josh Mason, 13th. He is looking to repair some poor performances by his own standards. Penrose, likewise, didn't get the weekend start he wanted. Chambers in 16th position. Bree Morris of New Zealand and Brazil's Lucas Bakuri. Then at the back, Louis Foster. Problems with his gear changes, and that means that Louis will have to come from the back, but I don't doubt he might be able to do that. I cannot believe this drama before the start of the race he's waving for assistance Callum Hedge our championship leader is in trouble but let's go down to Stephen Stephen what do you got okay I will just play the speculation game at the moment they actually can't talk to him ah he can't talk there is a suggestion so we play the speculation game complete battery failure oh oh speculation you know there's been no problems for Hedge all <laughs> season long and now three points in the lead of this championship hours away from the grand prix race two about to start and then wheeling him into the pit lane absolute and utter disaster this is a race against time but i can't tell you why just at this stage so on the radio you can see barry tomlinson who did such a wonderful job guiding Caleb Natoa yesterday. Now, while all of that drama was unfolding for Callum Hedge, Stephen and you guys with the cameras were focused on that end of pit lane, this car trundled down toward the exit. So I don't know what's happened to it yet. Barry doesn't want to talk to me right now and neither does Caleb, understandably. I'll get some more info and come back to you. But they're, they're liaising with the officials here at the end of the lane about how much time is left. 
The man who won the first race will now have to start right at the back and he'll have to wait till they pass his position before he can exit the pit lane. There's Nato. Up go the revs. Race two. Reverse top eight. Away they go. And a good start from Burt. A brilliant start from Leach. He tucks in right behind. And it's a real drag race to the first corner. Leach has got the position. He drops to third. Abel slots into second. And it is Charlie Burt who leads this race. Good start from Quinn. And away we go. Already Abel looking to get past. He's got to run on the outside of Wurtz there. Whoa, a lock up from Wurtz. And a very racy Brendan Leach in third position, looking for second. Everybody slots through. Caleb Nato joins at the back. No sign of Hedge. Fakuri and Bree Morris. Morris getting past. There's Nato. He's catching slowly. Wurtz leads the race from Abel. Leach is third. Oh, as you can see, some dirt off in the background. Did someone drop a wheel? Not a place you want to be doing that. Good start from Ryder Quinn, as well as Wurtz putting his head down now. Following in the footsteps of his famous father, who raced here in Formula Ford back in the day. Here's Callum Hedge with Stephen. What happened, Callum? I don't know, the thing just died. Simple as that. Just didn't start? Um, they got any idea what's going on? No, I just went to come up to the grid. It died. Um, just simple bad luck. Terminal? No idea. All right, mate. We know nothing about it. Chin up. Ah, well, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, buddy. More drama. Billy Fraser out of the race, stopped on track. Interesting one. You can see the left rear of the car had, had been broken there at some stage. So whether or not there's been contact or a failure, we'll Full we'll yellow. We've got a safety. We have our top contenders out. This was the start of the race. A good start from Wurtz, a better start from Leach, almost getting up the inside. I don't know where Skeets was going, but he was scooting off to the right there on the grass. Good start, though, from Wurtz. Abel slotting into second place and Brendan Leach in third. More drama would unfold, though, as Billy Fraser, and it looks like actually Chambers came together yeah. with Billy Fraser, not Bree Morris. So interesting one there. So it looks like maybe it was the front of uh, Chloe's nose cone there hit the right rear of uh, of Billy's car there. Green flag waves, away we go. Charlie Wurtz leads the race. He's got Abel slotting in behind. Leach didn't get away well. Van der Drift all over him. And a good start from Wurtz and from the second place man. But wide goes the 18 of Van Hoopen. And Van Hoopen really in trouble for a moment there, but he's gathered it all together. Meanwhile, at the front, Abel all over the back of Wurtz. Yeah, uh, Brendan Leach not getting a good restart there. As you can see, Chris Vanderdrift having a crack on the inside of there, putting all sorts of pressure on Brendan. Yeah, not a good restart at all by the young Kiwi from in the cargo. Racing in Dubai next weekend and warming himself out. Out comes Callum Hedge! And there's a sigh of relief from the Hedge contingent as the championship leader gets back out on track. Yeah. Four-way battle now at the front completely different and look at the I'm just looking at this battle for the lead here words doesn't seem to have the pace that no. we've seen out of him previously Abel's putting all sorts of pressure on him so it's sort of really the first time that we haven't seen words being able to control a race with pace that he's got the whole time he's he's don't get me wrong he's still fast but he's just in this right this just doesn't seem to have that little advantage that we've seen him have in the first two rounds and what proves it is that two Kiwis behind both Leach and Vanderdrift have caught up as you can see in third and fourth as they dive into the sweeper again. There's Van der Drift in the 84. Came back with Hamilton, Hamilton Asphalt just for this weekend. And the 36-year-old looking very racy at the moment as Wurtz climbs up the hill again. Let's take a look at the times then as they cross the line. A 35-2. Uh, excuse me. A 32-0 by Wurtz. Van Hopen with a 31.3, so he is super fast out there. He obviously had that moment on the coming out of turn one a couple of laps ago, but look at Wurtz. It's the first time we've really seen him have to defend. Jacob Abel doing a great job. He's on now, the outside. Keep your foot in, Jacob. Keep your foot in. If you can stay there, the Indy next driver looking to stay on the inside for the next corner. But good driving, and here we go. Oh, not quite. Wurtz defends well, but that was a moment. And as they battle, Leach is going to jump. The engineers are getting nervous, as we are. What a start to this one. All sorts of drama. All sorts of drama going on. So that's Wurtz's his engineer there, and you can see him. You can even see himself. He just doesn't seem to have that smile that we normally have. You can see they're just struggling just a little News bit more. Newsflash, Andrew. Guess who's in 10th place? Louis Foster. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I love it. He's behind Skeet at the moment. We haven't had time to concentrate on him, but he's gone from the back 
to the mid-pack in this race. That's that's a huge drive to already be up to 10. Mark Rundell is engineering, Rundell, excuse me, is engineering uh, Brendan Leach. I know he was pretty disappointed yesterday. He looks really strong today. Is that the case? Yeah, he's he's really happy. We made some good changes into yesterday's race and then some more into today, and um, he's, he's really happy. He's just biding his time at the moment, so we'll come home strong. Yeah, is it about biding his time and then complete focus on the GP? Yeah, look, our whole weekend is about the GP, but we want to try and win this one too. All right, thanks, Mark. No problem. Lauren Van Hopen up to fourth place. He got brilliantly past Van der Drift in that while we were talking there to Brendan's uh, engineer. And now Van Hopen is looking to try to reel in the other yellow car, the other yellow and black car of Brendan Leach. Here's another look at it. Andrew, textbook. Yes, you can see up the inside there. Chris Van der Drift just covering his line, but Van Hopen just taking that dive up the inside and uh, getting the move done. And he's just getting faster and faster. Stern then, Abel looking for a way past, putting massive pressure on Charlie Verts. This is the most he's done so far. He's almost alongside him there. Verts, if he didn't think he was in a fight, knows he is now. It's the Austrian versus the American. Jacob Abel came here not with a chip on his shoulder, but he felt that the Americans don't get a fair ship. They won four Grand Prix back in the 80s, did the Americans, Ross Cheever being one of them. And now Abel wants to do it for the Americans again here in 2023. So just having a look, I think Abel actually may have just touched Wurtz up in front there. You can see his nose here. Looks like he's got a little bit of oh, yeah. black rubber mark there. So he must have just got him. Lucky if he got him with the, the front of the nose. So we're just having a closer look there. Can you see? Mm, that's great camera work. But yeah, yeah, maybe not Who quite. Way And Van Hoven and gets through on Leach into third at the dipper. Take a dip at that. Nicely done. Good work by the Dutchman. So it's an Austrian, an American, and now the Dutchman in third. The Kiwis chasing down in fourth and fifth. Fitzgerald is sixth. Here's another look at it, Andrew. So you can see he's on the outside. Slight little lock up right there. You can see a little bit of smoke come off the tire. And then he's up the inside. But is it the wing? So he ah, did he touch the wing. He, he did, did get him. He is lucky that he doesn't have any more damage than that. I did see it. I thought they made contact. I thought it was on the nose. Shows he how strong these so cars are. Lucky. To be able to hit someone and get away with it like that on the wing, let alone the nose of the car. For oh, he's lucky there. Did Abel just go a little bit wide there? What yeah. Abel's under pressure now. Now nah, Van Hopen trying to come alongside and surely does get past the American. The it's Dutchman up, up to second. On the cleaner line in the braking zone. Is he gonna be able to go around the outside? Back comes Abel. Oh, great stuff. That's what we want. Who says you can't overtake in these FD60s? <laughs> wow, it's all going on. And Abel kicks it back. Oh, Quinn! The mighty. Well, there we are. Let him down. Quinn stopped it. Let's hope that's not a safety car on the last lap. Yeah, shame. Brent can't see any damage there, but something a bit of miss there as well with them spun but then you can see look at this battle so this is relieved words he's now got a, yeah. got a bit of a gap Big time. as Abel was under pressure from Van Hopen this has really played into the hands of the young Austrian because he needed a bit of a breathing space and he's got it as these two battle but Abel doing a really able job of holding off the Dutchman for now this race will feel like an eternity yeah. for words being out in front and then now for, uh, as the car that is battling trying to make a move the laps tick down so fast but when you're in the lead trying to defend your position it feels like an eternity sometimes as safety car oh, oh just what he needed so verts can take a sigh and a breath of relief as abel up the inside of van hopen what a battle these two had and back came the dutchman lauren larry as his teammates call him but then quinn spinning out so, out of the dipper, under safety, Charlie Burtz will be talking to his engineer and he knows he has to not push any further and now just prepare himself for the Grand Prix, which should be a doozy. What a race for Van Hopen. Came into this championship out of nowhere in many ways because he came in at the last minute and uh, effectively has been on the pace ever since. But it's the Remus, Tilka-sponsored number seven Austrian, following in the footsteps of his famous father, who raced here in New Zealand as a kid himself. Up the hill he comes. Charlie Verts will lead the championship again. And Charlie Verts is in a Waikato 
wonderland here in Hampton Downs as he checked the checkered flag and wins here. Immense pressure from Jacob Abel, who pushed him all the way, almost touching him. Well, did touch him on the wing. So the results for race two, Charlie Verts for M2 competition wins ahead of Jacob Abel, who picks up valuable points for his championship hopes. Lauren Van Hopen gets third, Brendan Leach fourth, Chris van der Drift fifth, Adam Fitzgerald, the Irishman, in sixth place, Liam Skeets from New Zealand seventh, Louis Foster, a brilliant run from the back to eighth, and then further down, Chase Penrose, just outside the top ten, Ryan Sheerhan, Natoa up to 13th from the back, Chambers, Fikuri, Morris, Ryder Quinn spins out, Callum Hedge goes on to take 18th, despite the problems of his ECU, Billy Fraser not able to take part. Lawrence Van Hopen, that was a hell of a drive. Did it look and feel as good as we thought? Yeah, it was a very good race. Um, shame about a few points that I went off. Um, otherwise, I think we could have even challenged for the win maybe. But uh, yeah, it was definitely a good race and I'm happy to finish back on the podium. Congratulations, that was a hell of a drive. Yeah, thank you. You know, definitely a really close one there between me and Charlie. So, yeah, a little bit bummed we didn't get the win because I think we, we definitely had the pace for it. But, you know, props to him for, for doing a great job defending. I, I tried everything I could to put pressure on him, but, you know, he, he held up there. So congrats to him and uh, on to the Grand Prix. Charlie, great race. Your boss has said drive of the season so far. How bad were the front tyres? I mean, I think I destroyed the tyres yesterday, so I was struggling a lot for pace. I think you could see basically every lap, Jacob behind me gained half a second in T1 or something like that, because I kept messing up. So then I had to bring my braking point like 40 metres before what I was doing yesterday, so I was struggling a bit, but then uh, it was good to keep Jacob behind. He definitely had a lot more pace, and we just have to look at where we were missing the pace. I think coming more from destroying the tyres yesterday, but happy with the win, and um, yeah, looking forward to the New Zealand Grand Prix. Coming up, he's only been racing a few seasons, but Ryder Quinn of Australia has made his impact here in New Zealand. And we have the 67th New Zealand Grand Prix. I'm Ryder Quinn, I'm 17 years old, and I'm from Gold Coast, Australia. So, started motorsport in 2021, that um, was my first season. Um, did a regional championship then, and then uh, moved up to a national former forward um, in Australia last year and then this year, yeah, uh, catch all Toyota Formula Regional Oceania Championship uh, to start the year. Not sure what, what's next, um, but yeah, I mean, although I started motorsport quite late, I've always been around it. Well, my family uh, has a long history in motorsport um, and whenever I could get in a go-kart or on a, on a Peewee 50, um, I would and I'd absolutely love that. Tony Quinn. Uh, Popeye, as, as I know him, um, obviously my granddad is a good, is a good guy. Um, he can, all he tells me is to be smart, work hard, um, and yeah, it, that's what he says. He says, there's, there's no secret, um, the only way you're going to be successful is if you work hard. Um, and I feel like you know, I've, been, I've been trying to live up to that. Uh, and the last you know, seven months has been in preparation for this, uh, for this series, so I think we're ready. This series, it goes beyond motorsport for me. Um, it's, it's very, very special and I'm quite honoured to be um, racing on, on three of three tracks uh, in New Zealand. It's Taupo, Highlands and Hamden Downs. Awesome tracks, awesome tracks. You know, from the very start, we've been here. Like, I remember uh, getting on a four-wheeler and I've probably done more laps around the track when it was dirt on my quad bike than I have in an actual race car. Um, so uh, the memories um, of everyone, my whole family here um, and through motorsport are very strong um, and very sentimental to me. It's, it does go beyond motorsport and I'm, I'm very honoured to be um, racing on them. This championship, although having very little experience, um, I've never raced the car with wing, wings and slicks. Um, the goal is to win. So uh, I am obviously cognizant that um, I, I am lacking that experience, um, but we've been preparing um, and yeah, so we, all, we're, all we're here to do is give it our best shot uh, and yeah, hopefully win. But a win can be development. A, a win, a, you can't win every single race. There's, I think there's 20, 20 days or, or 20 days that you're on track and it's impossible to be at peak every single day. So if I can come out of this championship um, developed and bedded, 
um, that's definitely a win and um, and yeah that has to be that has to be the biggest takeaway from the championship. Here is the grid then for the Grand Prix and it sees the young Dutchman Lauren van Hopen in pole position alongside him Louis Foster of Great Britain. Caleb Nata of New Zealand and Callum Hedge are next. Then comes Charlie Burns, the championship leader, and Liam Skeets, also of New Zealand. Jacob Abel, the American, and David Morales, both from the USA, start seventh and eighth. The ninth, and Chris Vanderdrift looking for that win. Josh Mason alongside him. Ryan Sheehan of the States and Adam Fitzgerald of Ireland. Brendan Leach of New Zealand, Ryder Quinn of Australia, 13th and 14th. Then comes James Penrose, already a winner. Chloe Chambers of the USA, Penrose of New Zealand. For Fury of Brazil, Billy Fraser of New Zealand. Eight Kiwis in all, including this young lady. 19th, Brianna Morris of Auckland, New Zealand. Grid is fully formed. We are ready to go racing for the 67th running of the New Zealand Grand Prix. Up go the Rams, on go the lights. Out go the lights and away we go. Good start from Van Hopen. He gets the jump. Away they go. Down towards the first corner. It's snip and tuck. Louis Foster coming back at him. Foster's got ahead. Foster takes the lead. It's Great Britain out front against Holland. Hedge is third. Good start from Foster. Yeah, great start by him, managing to hold it right around the outside with those cold tyres. Oh, this is good stuff, and Van Hopen is trying desperately to get on level turns with Foster, but he closes the door nicely. Hedge comfortable in third place at the moment. Just sort of mind having another look at that start as well. It looked like Foster may have just about been creeping before he got going there, so that's something that we'll have to have a look at in a replay. But either way, that aside, how he went round the outside at turn one, he is on fire. Nato in fourth position. Good start by him. Didn't get the blinder he got before. Oh, Van Hopen already making a challenge on Foster there. So, very interesting. We'll see if you are right, because Foster at the moment holds the lead as they head up towards the Dipper for the first time. Packed house here at Hampton Downs. What a start to the Grand Prix, but a long way to go yet. A very, very long way to go. 28 laps total this race as they're making their way around for the first lap. But this works into Foster's hands. Let's just have a look at the start here, see if there's anything out of it. Didn't see it there, but we might see it from another angle. We're watching closely on race control, see if they make any decisions, but it was a very, very good start. Either it was a very, very fast reaction from Foster or a slower reaction maybe from Van Hopen. So, yeah, at this stage we haven't heard anything from race control, so I could be alluding to nothing. Yeah, well, that's all right. Mason trying to make his way through. Foster under pressure again from Van Hopen. Hopen in second, Hedge still third. Hedge looking to take the win here. Nato right behind him, Vanderdrift. Oh, Nato gets completely sideways in the 50. Somehow grabs it all together. So I think we might see a bit of pace out of Calabria. Oh. Up the inside, gets Van, the move done. Nicely done. Van Hopen, what a move by the 17-year-old Dutchman. He made Foster look very slow for a moment, but Foster will be coming back at him. He doesn't like that kind of move. He's just as aggressive as the young Dutchman. Great racing already. So one I just want to watch as well is Callum Hedge. I spoke to him before the race and he said he's been struggling all weekend with problems with gear shifts. So maybe now this new ECU is enough for him to just really pick the pace up. And as you can see, he's already closing in on this battle here. Callum Hedge also suffers from uh, a little bit of the allergies. He was taking his uh, medicine, if it were, in terms of eye drops before the race. Uh, he, so he's got plenty to deal with, this poor old Callum. And he's also got Nato behind him. Vanderdrift in fifth. Skeets now six. Verts, the championship leader, is seven. Screeching the tyres, eight is able, Morales nine, Quinn ten. Interestingly enough there, he actually covered his line man open down there into turn two, uh, into the ITM dipper. Here's another look at Natoa, really jumping over for a moment, the both gravel and dirt. Van Hopen making that lovely move. Yeah, great move by him there. He faked to the left-hand side, which then made Louis just sort of fake to the left to just pull the car out a bit wider, and then bang, dived up the inside and got the move done. So then, Van Hopen crosses the line. Let's take a look at the times. The fastest lap looks as though it's going to be Chris Vanderdrift, in fact. 131.6. So Vanderdrift on the move in the all red behind Nartoa, but then he bounces up and loses time in himself. Skeets just behind him. Then Verts, Abel, Morales, Quinn, Sheehan, Mason, Leach, Fraser up to 14. Penrose, Chambers, Fitzgerald, Morris, and Fakuri. The field starting to spread out as they head through the Toyota Gazoo Racing Turn 2. 
James Penrose making a move there as well, but this is starting to just level out that little bit more through here as Foster just doesn't seem to have quite the pace to hang on to Van Hopen there. I've got a feeling that Hedge has made a decision that yes, he wants to win the Grand Prix, but only if he can chance it. And what I mean by that is he needs the points, he needs the championship, and he's not going to give it away. Yeah, and, and in this position where he's sitting third at the moment, he's not focused on championship. He wants a crack at this New Zealand Grand Prix, especially sitting in third place. Anything can happen from here. He can see the lead from there. So championship won't even be crossing his mind at this point in time. So here comes Morales into the dipper. Behind him, Quinn, the grandson of the owner of the track, Tony Quinn. Lovely story that. There's so many great stories up and down the pit lane. I spent time with the Natoas last night for dinner. I got lucky, just happened to walk in, and there they were. Got the whole story of the family and how hard it's been for Caleb, who has done the hard yards. Caleb gained the money, did the work, did the sponsorship search, and has got himself to this position. Let's go down to Steve. Good timing, JG. Good work. Lawrence Van Hoeven. Uh, he's driving like a demon. Is he talking much? Uh, at the moment, uh, not much. Like just updating a little bit on the gap and on the pace. Uh, but I think he's just settling in the rhythm and just trying now to put on a little bit, control a little bit the uh, the gap compared to uh, Foster uh, and controlling the tires because for sure it's a long race. So we need to keep the tires in good shape for the end. But How confident are you right now? I think pretty good. I think we have a small pace advantage at the moment. Uh, let's see if we can manage the tires and if we can still get the pace advantage at the end. But so far, so good. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. A little bit of a moment there for Caleb Nato. He had a look up the inside. Van der Drift was one going to go through. There's Foster, but the gap now forming for third place. And I think that's why Nato is wanting the hurry up here. He wants to get ahead of Hedge and get with the leaders. Yeah, just to follow on from that conversation as well from uh, Van Hopen's engineer, just to manage the tyres. So in that situation, what, do you, what you want to do as the leading driver, you want to build that gap. You don't want to just go 11 tenths the whole day and just build out a 20 second lead because what could happen is you could burn the car up pull that massive lead and then bank safety car. Something like that could happen and in that situation you'll have nothing to fight for later on in the race. So it's all about management. It's such a long race. So you just want to build around one to two second gap somewhere in that range and if you can hold that gap then you can just control things from there. Brendan Leach all over the back of young Ryan Sheehan, another 17 year old coming as a rookie for the first time into TRS and Brendan Leach in his eighth Grand Prix gets by him nicely at the sweeper. Knows this track like the back of his hand. Yeah, I wonder if Hedge not going out in race two, or at least not going out early, uh, has saved a few tyres for him. As the fuel load goes down, how does the car feel underneath you? It does start, believe it or not, normally you, you'd hear that the car gets worse, starts sliding around quite a bit. Yes, it does do that, but this Hankook tyre, it doesn't seem to have the big drop off like you'd see out of some other brands. So uh, you can just, you can afford to push on that a little bit more and we'll start seeing the lap times come down lap over lap. So if you look at the last lap times, they're actually starting to do some of the quickest laps of the race. So Louis Foss, that last lap was a bit quicker, so he's closed that gap up a bit again. He was only a couple of one hundredths of a second off his quickest time, so we will see these lap times get faster. Ten laps to go. The battle at the back is just as furious. Curie in 19th, Brie Morris in her first Grand Prix 18th, just behind Chambers, her teammate. Fitzgerald, the Irishman, down in 16th, his auntie and uncle here this weekend. Fraser, Billy Fraser in 15th, Penrose, a winner already, he's in 14th, Mason 13th, Sheehan just outside the top 10 in 12th. Oh! Brendan Leach goes Grass tracking, a big moment for him. Oh, that is a place you don't want to have a moment. Right at the top of double B there. You can see he's actually ended up on the national circuit <laughs> at that point. So gone super wide because he's just so fast into that, la into that corner there. So whether or not he's had a moment on his own, let's have a look at the replay here. Yeah, oh. all on his own. So That's a weird one. He outbraked himself into double B. Yeah, something a bit strange there, just the way it's just gone straight ahead there. Whether or not he's got another issue, we'll keep an eye on that. Let's head down to Rusty. Just to try and uh, answer the question you've been asking in relation to Brendan Leach, just been down here to, to Kiwi Motorsport. They don't think it's an issue with that car, so I reckon this just underscores the intensity of how hard they're trying and how much somebody like Brendan Leach wants to succeed in this race. Thank you, Rusty. Nato almost did it. This could be the chance. He's stuck right next to... Callum Hedge as they head down to the Toyota Gazoo Racing Turn 2. He takes avoiding action, does Callum Hedge, gets into the middle of the road and says, nope, not this time, son. 
Yeah, it's quite interesting the way that Callum took a while to pull to the inside to cover his position there, but certainly Nato are putting more and more pressure on him every lap here. As you yeah, can see, that's a good example. Look at the gap the front two have got there. Yeah. Look how much further ahead they've managed to get. Well, officially eight seconds ahead of uh, the leaders at the moment. So, yeah, it really is quite a country mile. Watching on pensively on the sidelines as this race unfolds. Callum Hedge chasing both the championship and the Grand Prix. He's got a lot of work to do from there, though. Foster not out of it. Only a second off and hoping one mistake. And there's a big mistake from Natoa. Oh, oh. And they touch for a moment there. Natoa slightly out of control. Somehow gathers it all together. But that was a big moment. Oh, just managed to hang on to it there. And I wonder if he's done any damage to his wing there because he definitely made contact with him. I think he's getting frustrated more than anything else. Yeah, he is. And he needs to make the move now because he would have done some damage to that right front tyre there. Let's take another look at it there from miles back there. He's had a crack up the inside. That left front tire you can see it's all locked up but he's managed to release it enough so maybe not too much damage but shows how strong those front wings are we saw some touching in the other race as well earlier so whether or not on the right hand side he's lost that end plate we'll find out oh Nato goes under the grass if he didn't lose his end plate there he might this time now Vanderdrift comes alongside him big big mistakes by Nato and that's put him back and Vanderdrift up to fourth so I'm just wondering if that is, I'm just having a look at that wing again. So you can see Caleb now really struggling with locking. I wonder if he has done a little bit of damage to that wing to force him wider to one. Not sure how it started, but uh, certainly he's struggling there a bit now. He's, doesn't look too bad actually. He managed, looks like he has got away with it. That wing looks pretty well attached there still. Going back to the initial incident, was it ever on? He knew he needed to have a go at some point, and that's okay. what he did. Thought, that nah, this is my chance, now or never. He's here to win the New Zealand Grand Prix. He can't afford to see Van Hopen or Foster get any further ahead, even though from that, even if he did get past Callum, it was a huge task to catch up to those guys. But either way, he had to have a crack at some point. He did that, and unfortunately, it hasn't worked for him. Now, nah, Van der Drift looking very racy indeed behind Hedge. There's the damage to the wing, but luckily it's got tyre marks on it, but not a lot of damage. Yeah, super, super lucky not to uh, either have Callum cut his tyre there or for uh, damage to that front wing. On to the last lap now. Foster has one more chance, but I don't think he's close enough. Van Hopen has been hoping and praying for this moment, and it's coming. Four tenths of a second he took out of him last lap. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Foster knows this is his last opportunity, breaking that a little bit later, trying to close in every little bit of gap, but he's within that aero wash now, so it's hard to stay there. The Dutchman doing the business here as he comes out of three. It's going to feel like this is the longest lap of his life. Vanderdrift now all over the back of Hedge. Last chance hotel for everyone here. It's the 67th running of the New Zealand Grand Prix. It means so much to these youngsters' careers and some of the more older guys like Chris Vanderdrift. It means everything to be in the show, in the race, and in this auspicious occasion. And don't forget, this is for the last step on the podium as well. You still want to make your way onto the podium for the New Zealand Grand Prix. Into the dipper for the last time. Foster must have given up the ghost by now, surely. He's lost time. He locks up again. Tense moments as we get ready for the checkered flag. Lauren Van Hopen is on his way to victory here. What a story. He has only been in the country less than a week. And he's going to win the New Zealand Grand Prix. He is the 67th winner of this brilliant, brilliant race. He's done it. Van Hopen wins. And the Dutchman does it in style from the get-go. That was immaculate. Welcome, Lauren, to the championship. What a way. New Zealand Grand Prix is yours. Callum Hedge has done himself no harm, narrowing the gap between himself and Verts for the championship, setting it up beautifully for the final three races. But this time, it's Lauren Van Hopen who takes it for M2 competition. Louis Foster did not do a bad job. Excellent stuff. Callum Hedge in third. Chris Vanderdrift in fourth. Caleb Nato a fifth. Skeets in sixth. Charlie Bird seventh. Jacob Abel eighth. David Morales ninth. And Ryder Quinn in tenth position. Ryan Sheehan takes eleventh. Josh Mason twelfth. James Penrose. Brendan Leach. Billy Fraser. Adam Fitzgerald. Chloe Chambers in 17th, Brianna Morris in 18th, and Lucas Pecori in 19th. I hope you've enjoyed what has been another sensational day of motor racing here in New Zealand. And once again, a new name is on the famous Motor Cup.
re reaction first of all? Um, yeah, just happy to make it to the end of that race. Uh, this morning was quite tough for me. Um, obviously not the way we wanted it to go with a uh, with mechanical failure. Um, and then that race, the goal was just to, just to survive, make it to the end. Uh, third place isn't the, the win in the Grand Prix that I wanted, but uh, to be the top Kiwi is, is very cool. How do you rate that one? Yeah, I mean, obviously a uh, good start, got around the outside um, into turn one and held the lead for almost a lap. Um, but yeah, no, he put in a really, really good move. It was quite bold, uh, quite an aggressive move. And um, But no, you know, sometimes you got to take risks and he did that and it paid off for him. So um, yeah, no, congrats to him. He was fast all race. I really struggled to keep up with him and um, managed to just trade laps after lap and the, the, the kind of gap didn't really change. So um, yeah, it was a good race. Pole position, P1. How do you feel, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy. It was such a tough race, like, especially the last five laps, like I almost couldn't hold the steering wheel anymore. But uh, I think we've done a really good job and I'm super happy to take the win. So as the dust settles at the New Zealand Grand Prix for another brilliant year, we head to Topo for the final round of the Castrol Toyota FR Oceana Championship. The battle lines are drawn between Kiwi, Callum Hedge and Austrian Charlie Wurz. Or can Jacob Abel of the USA become the first American to win the coveted Chris Amon Trophy?